So this is a bonus video based on viewer generated content. Bonus video. So in this video, we finished pretty much all the cellular automata stuff that I had planned. And during the course of this, I received some comments. And one of the comments was from Danny Denton. And on Twitter, he did this. Let's have a look. Look at that. Text. Text made from cellular automata. How did he do that? So eventually, Danny told us how he did that. And he released the code onto GitHub. And that was really useful. So we can see in here, let's have a look at his code. There we go. So Danny has reverse engineered the shapes and plotted them on the cellular automata as blocks. A block is a type of cellular automata that doesn't change. So it's just a square. And so long as you have a gap between all the squares, they won't change as they go through and you get a stable text. That's useful information. So the question is then, can we build on what Danny has done and created another way of doing text? So that's what I had a look at and I did this. Now I took a slightly different approach from Danny because you know, I'm lazy and I'm not going to do the work that Danny did to plot out all the pixels in advance. So what I thought I'd use was the canvas text drawing capabilities anyway. So it would just draw on the canvas. Then what I'll do is I'll read the canvas, take every pixel that the text has plotted, and then I will just plot that as a, a block, but scaled up for the cellular automata. And that's how I created this. So let's look at what we do. I'll go into the tech, the code in a bit more detail. So first of all, we just have to stop the game playing, your normal stop invasion, stop game, clear the population and clear the canvas. So that gives us a completely blank slate. Then we plot the text. Now in order to have enough space between the letters, I had to look up and see how do we do a crude kerning hack, which is the spacing between the letters. So I found that in Stack Overflow, added that into my code. So here what I'm doing is I'm setting up text to draw on the canvas at 14 pixels in Verdana font, setting the color, then just plotting that text on using the stroke text, then the complicated bit. So JavaScript has a function called get image data that will allow me to get the image data for what is actually plotted in the canvas. I read that into this array. That's what the get image data does. Then I go over the image data array and every time I find a pixel, I add it as a block, but scale up the X and Y so that I've got gaps between them. So I have a, a four scaling and plot the, the block on. And then that allows me to show the text. So let's have a look at this in action. So let me resize the window. So we have our cellular automata running. I need to inspect element. What I'm going to do is stop the world and clear it. Plot the text. So this is setting the font, choosing the color, then adding some padding into the, the text, then plotting it. So you'll see when we do this, the text up there in the top, but that doesn't cover the whole area. So what we want to do then is add all of that into the world. So you can't see, but what it's done is it's taken that image data from up to 200 by 60. It's iterated over that. And every time it found a pixel, it plotted it. Then in order to see it, I start the game. And there we go. So let's have a look at what would happen if we didn't do all the extra bits. So say I don't put in the padding to get the kerning. Let me get rid of the padding in here. See, I plot that. Doesn't look like it made much difference up there, does it? In fact, it probably didn't make any difference because it didn't overwrite padding. There you go, that's a little bit closer together now. So if I actually plot that, do the same 
get the image data and try and plot it, then start the game. It's all a bit squished together. Right? Because it's blocks, it doesn't uh, iterate, it doesn't advance, but it's all a bit squished and horrible. So that's what the kerning hack was for, to give me the ability to make it look better. Now obviously, I could I use different fonts. We could experiment with different fonts. Watch what happens if we don't have the scaling that we used. So let me clear everything up. See, I stick the scaling down to three. What happens? Now, what I think will happen is we will display the message, but because it's closer together, it will evolve. So it will be the start point for an evolutionary world. There we go. So that in its own is quite a nice little effect. And if I'd recorded that, that would be quite nice. We could spread that across. But we've created a world that way because it's the spacing that is important. So what could you do with this? I mean, in theory, we could use this to uh, manipulate the canvas. So we could, if we wanted, do canvas dot width and height of 500. I could plot a border around that, then I could add the text. So I could set the text font to what, 80, 80 pixels. Then these 15, 30, 45 numbers, by the way, are estimates based on the font size. So because my font size is 80, I'm going to say first line starting at Y. And we just made this 500 by 500. So I'm going to say 500 PX. See what happens with that. There we go. And then 500 PX. And I'm going to put this at uh, 80 plus 80 is 160. Look at my math skills. So in theory now, We've generated an image that is 500 by 500 because we changed the size of the canvas. We've written 500 px, 500 px. I could save this image. Then when I look at the properties of what we've saved, we've created an image that's 500 by 500. So in theory, I could use this to create images for my testing. I could upload them. I could create a different, let's view this. So I've created transparent image that is 500 by 500. I could use that in my testing if I wanted. We could create different images. It's always worth thinking about when we have certain skills, how can we apply it in our testing? And what this is really doing if we generalize it up is manipulating the canvas. We can manipulate the canvas from the console. We can interact with the canvas and download the images. So we could create custom images that are the exact size we want without having to mess around with an art package, which we might then upload into systems if we were testing systems that handled images. And we might find a way of automating the creation of this. And it's worth just thinking through what skills you have, what technologies you have available to you, and making them fit in your testing. But that's all based on content provided by Danny Dainton when we were creating the Cellular Automata game. So thanks, Danny. That was very useful. Appreciate it. Thank you.